This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It says here are four equilateral triangles. Find the missing area. And we're given the area of this triangle is 20 and the area of this triangle is five. If you want to try it on your own, pause it right now because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. First, I want to see if we can make an equation for the area of this triangle. And to do that, let's use the notes for the area of an equilateral triangle. In any given equilateral triangle, the area is equal to the square root of 3 over 4 times the side length squared. In past videos, we derived this by hand, making a 30, 60, 90 triangle and figuring it out from there. I think it's time we can just start using these notes. And if we label the sides of this triangle x, the question mark area is going to equal square root of 3 over 4 times x squared. This looks important. Let's put a box around it. And this is what we're trying to solve. We're still not done with these notes yet. We can use them to find the side lengths of these two triangles. Let's call this side length y and this side length z. And let's use these equations to find y and z. For this top one, the area is equal to 20 and the side length is equal to y. Does that make sense, y? And for this one, the area is equal to 5 and in the place of the side length, let's plug in z. Our goal is to get y and z all by themselves. Let's multiply both sides of both equations by the reciprocal of this fraction, 4 over square root of 3. And then on the left-hand side of the top one, we can do 4 times 20 to give us 80, and that'll be 80 over root 3. And then for this one, 4 times 5 is equal to 20, and that'll give us 20 over root 3. And then on the right-hand side, these two fractions will cancel each other out. And same thing for these two. And now we have y squared is equal to this, or z squared is equal to this. Next, we can square root both sides of both equations. On the right-hand side of both of these, the square root and the square will cancel each other out. And now we have values for y and z. The sides of this triangle are equal to this square root. We can put that here. And the sides of this triangle are equal to this square root. Let's put it here. And for now, I think this is everything we can do with these notes. Now from here, let's chase some angles. Since this is an equilateral triangle, all the angles will be equal to 60 degrees. And same thing for this triangle, all these angles will equal 60 degrees. We currently don't know how large this angle is. Let's call it theta. And if this is theta, we can find out a formula for this angle. It's going to be 180 degrees minus 60 minus theta. And that's because all the angles have to add to 180. 180 minus 60 is 120, so we end up with 120 minus theta. And now we have everything we need to find this angle. These three angles will add to 180 degrees. So this last angle will be 180 minus 120 minus theta minus 60. From here, we can distribute this negative to both of these terms. And negative 120 plus negative 60 is negative 180, and these will cancel each other out. So this angle is equal to theta. And then we can get the rest of these angles by doing the same thing we did before. This would end up being 120 minus theta. This would end up being theta. And this would end up being 120 minus theta. We just have to repeat the steps we did earlier. Now from here, let's focus on these three triangles. They all have the exact same angles. That means the red triangle, the blue triangle, and the green triangle will all be similar. And they all share this same corresponding side x. That means all three triangles are congruent. The red triangle is congruent to the blue triangle is congruent to the green triangle. All their corresponding angles are congruent and all their corresponding sides are congruent. Now if we go back to this triangle, since this side was this square root, this side will also be the same square root. And that's the largest side of this green triangle. What's well, also going to be the largest side of the blue triangle. And then next let's look at this yellow triangle. This side will be the same thing as this side, so this is also going to be that square root. And now we know quite a bit about this blue triangle. Let's copy it down here. And I have to pause right now. I'll be back in a couple hours to finish. It should just feel like a second to you. Hey guys, I'm back. In order to find x, we're going to use the law of cosines. It says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. That's exactly what we need for this right here. So this c is the same thing as the x. So in the place of the c, we can plug in x. And now we can make room for everything else. So for the a, that's going to be the side on the bottom. That's the square root that has the 80 in it. So we'll put that in the a there and that in the a there. And then the b is the other side length. That's going to be the square root that has the 20 in it. We'll put that there and that there. And then cosine of capital C. Capital C is the size of this angle, which is 60 degrees. And now we don't really need these notes anymore. Next, we can copy all this down and let's clean it up. 
For the first term, the square root and the square will cancel each other out. For the second term, the square root and the square will cancel each other out. And then for this term, these two square roots can be combined into a single square root. And then these two fractions can be combined into a single fraction. On the top of the fraction, 80 times 20 is 1600. And on bottom, the square root of 3 times square root of 3 is equal to square root of 9, which is 3. And now for the square root of this whole fraction, we can put a square root on top and bottom. On top, the square root of 1600 is 40. And we can just leave the bottom alone. And then 2 times 40 is equal to 80. And then we can do the cosine of 60 degrees. So if we look at a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. That'll give us x over 2x, which simplifies to 1 half. So cosine of 60 is equal to 1 half. And then from here, we can multiply the 80 times 1 half to give us 40. And now let's smush everything together. All three of these fractions have the same denominator, so we can write it as a single fraction. And 80 plus 20 minus 40 is equal to 60. And now we have the value of x squared. That is the missing piece of our puzzle. Let's give ourselves some room, and in the place of the x squared, let's plug in 60 over root 3. This root 3 on top and this root 3 on bottom can cancel each other out. And we end up with 60 over 4. And 60 divided by 4 is equal to 15. Let's give it a label of units squared, and we already got a box. The missing area of this triangle is 15 units squared. How exciting. I think this problem was brilliant. Speaking of brilliant, let's talk about brilliant. Brilliant has thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. And all of them are interactive, which is the most effective way to learn. I really like learning new topics. I literally learn something new every single day. Sometimes I'm not exactly sure what to do next, but with Brilliant, they're always in order. There's no need for me to find something to learn for the day. It's already just waiting for me there. There's clearly professionals behind the scenes choosing not only how to explain stuff, but the order that you learn it in. It's a lot of fun going through the lessons and seeing where it goes. To try Brilliant for free, visit brilliant.org slash andymath or scan the QR code on the screen. Or you can click on the link in the description. You can also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. How exciting.